let's welcome Mr. Elon Musk, the co-founder and CEO at Tesla, and Jack Ma, the co-chair of the UN High-Level Panel on Digital Cooperation. Let's give them a very big applause. Okay, great. AI, yeah. AI, I, I hate the word AI called artificial intelligence. I call it Alibaba intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> might, might end up being true, you never know. Um, I, I think generally people um, underestimate the, the capability, capability of AI. They sort of think like it's a smart human. Um, but it's, it's, it's really much, it's going to be much more than that. Um, it'll be much smarter than the smartest human. Yeah. I mean, it'll, be, it'll be like, you know, if, like, can a chimpanzee really understand humans? Not really. You know, they're just we just seem like strange aliens. Um, they mostly just care about other chimpanzees, uh, and uh, this will be how it is, more or less, in a relative. Int in fact, if it's if if the difference is only that small, that would be amazing. Probably, it's much much greater. I mean, I really think that there should be other companies like Neuralink, um, essentially to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain, because uh, the Right, right now, we are already a cyborg. People don't realize we are already a cyborg because we are so well integrated with our phones and our computers. Uh, the, the phone is almost like an extension of yourself. If you forget your phone, it's like a missing limb. Um, but the bandwidth, the, the communication bandwidth to the phone is very low, especially input. So, in fact, input bandwidth to computers has actually gone down because of typing with two thumbs as opposed to ten fingers. I'm happy about the artificial intelligence or Alibaba intelligence that's going to understand a human, the inside of the human better. So when people worry a lot about artificial intelligence, people should have more confidence in themselves because I think if a lot of solutions we don't have today, but there will be solutions tomorrow, we don't have solutions, but the young people will have solutions. So I'm quite optimistic, and uh, I don't think artificial intelligence is a threat. I don't think artificial intelligence is something terrible. I mean, you look at sort of the, the rate of advancement. Just in general, the rate of advancement of computers is insane. Um, I'm not trying to be, I'm a naturally optimistic person, to be clear. I'm not saying, hey, doom and gloom. Uh, I'm just saying the, these, this is the apparent pattern. The, the rate of change of technology is in, incredibly fast. Um, it is outpacing our ability to understand it. Well, I'm not sure, is that good or bad? I don't know. Well, let's talk about something fun. I, I'm at the mind that you want to go on the Mars. Shall we go to the, the Mars? Or interested on the Earth, the things, what's going on happening here. So what, what, why are you so curious about the Mars? Continue consciousness into the future. What increases the probability of consciousness um, of, of, of continuing into the future? I think we should not take it for granted that consciousness will continue because we have not encountered any aliens. Where are the aliens? This is the Fermi paradox. This is one of the most important questions. How come we've not found any aliens? Uh, SpaceX actually has Area 59. Uh, it's even better, eight better than 51. One of those actions is to become a multi-planet species or ensure that life is multi-planetary. Not because I think something that, it's not, not from, from the standpoint of it just being an escape hatch or because I think that Earth is doomed. Um, but there's a certain probability that is irreducible uh, that something may happen to Earth. Just, this is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it's been possible to extend life beyond Earth. Before this, it was not possible. It's, it's great to send one million people to the Mars, but we have to care about the 7.4 billion people on the Earth. How can we make the world more sustainable? And I'm not that fond of the Mars because I think it's easy to go to the Mars when you go on the top of the hills of the, of the, of the building. Just a one step, you go to Mars, but you will never be able to come back. Yeah, that, so that's, that's, my that's view. not how it works, though. To be clear, I'm very pro-Earth. When I say 
you know, us becoming a multi-planet species or making life multi, uh, ex extending life beyond Earth, um, ex ex expanding the scope and scale of consciousness. Um, the, from a resource standpoint, I'm talking about less than 1% of Earth's resources should be dedicated to uh, making life multi-planetary or, co or making consciousness multi-planetary. So, uh, you know, I think it should be like somewhere in between uh, how much we spend on lipstick and how much we spend on healthcare. Like, and obviously I spend a lot of my time on uh, sustainable energy with Tesla, with uh, you know, electric cars and solar and batteries and that kind of thing. And um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be here in, in Shanghai for the, the, the Shanghai Giga Factory, which is, um, I think uh, the Tesla China team has done an amazing job, R really mind blowing, like I've just uh, astounded so what new jobs will be created because of AI or has the change already started? What do you think? I think why we need that many jobs. <laughs> sure. Right? My view is that the jobs, actually every technology revolution people start to worry. Right? Last 200 years we worry about the new technology going to take away all the jobs. Actually, we made a lot of jobs. Second, because of the industrial revolution, Job created a lot of jobs. What I think is the next 20, 30 years, human beings will live much longer. The life science technology is going to make people live probably 100, 120 years. And something that involves people or engineering is probably a good, a good approach. Yeah. I never worry about the things that I cannot solve. I left other people to solve it. Sure. If nobody can solve it, just let it be. That's my life. Oh, let's talk about education. I'm quite interested about education. Sure. Do you have any advice for young professionals who want to pursue a career in AI? Computer is a computer. Computer is just a toy. Man cannot even make a mosquito. So we should have confidence. Computer only have chips. Man have the heart. Our kids be able to find a jobs in the future, be able to live in a life that only working three days a week, four hours a day. The saying is the best way to predict the future is to make it. Um, just, and, and then assess whether what you are learning is enabling you to predict the future with less error. Are you less wrong? We are all, always wrong to some degree. But close the loop on being less wrong about future. I would say that's the right way to think about education. I mean, down the road with Neuralink, it w you can just upload any subject instantly. So it'd be like the Matrix. And I never worry about the errors and the mistakes. Errors and mistakes that are the best assets of human lives. And humans, I think that when people worry about the, the disasters that AI is going to bring in, I think it's not the disasters. It's the mistakes that human beings make. The most important thing, like I said, the most important mis mistake I see smart people making is assuming that they're smart. They're not. Yeah. So give me an example what uh -huh. the animals or things that a human being made that is smarter than human beings. Well, computers actually are already much smarter than, than people on so many dimensions. We just keep moving the goalposts. Uh, so we used to think, like, for example, being good at chess was an example of a smart human. And then Kasparov was crushed by Deep Blue in 97. That was a long time ago. 22 years. I mean, right now your cell phone could crush the world champion at chess, literally. Um, Go used to be sort of thought of as something that humans were better at than computers. Then Lisa Dahl was beaten 4-1 four, four by AlphaZero. Then uh, a new version of AlphaZero, oh, sorry, I should say AlphaGo. AlphaGo beat Lisa Dahl 4-1. Then uh, there's AlphaZero. AlphaZero crushed AlphaGo 100 to 0. Now it's just pointless because it just keeps playing itself. It, humans are it, uh, trying to play a, a computer Go is like trying to fight uh, Zeus. It's not going to work. Computer may be clever, but human beings are much smarter. Yeah, definitely not. I'm, I'm worried about the birth rate, which, which you alluded to earlier. 
the, uh, the contrary to like mo most people think we we have like too many people on the planet, but actually this is uh, this is an outdated view. This AI means love. <laughs> How longer do you think people can live for? With the help of AI, can AI help with environment sustainability? Can you? And, and continue the momentum towards environmental sustainability. And China is actually the world leader in this. In fact, I, I'm not sure how well it is known outside of China just how much China is a world leader in environmental sustainability. Uh, but I do think um, humans can and will solve sustainability. If, if, we, can, if we can do the neural lace, then I think, or the neural link, essentially, the age will not matter that much. You can simply save your state uh, and, and restore your state. Even, you know, go to the space is great, but if we can spend at resources just to focus on helping pick up the garbage from the oceans, that thing is more difficult than to go to the Mars. But artificial intelligence can help us achieving that and solve the problems. And the second, a human being can live better, can live longer. But what we need is not only live longer, we want to live healthier. Human being learn from mistakes. It's great to die. <laughs> That's probably true. Thank you. Yeah, you cannot There's, live long. I just like, yeah.